Hey everybody, Ted Forbes. Welcome back to The Art of Photography. In this video today, I have a real special treat for you guys. Uh, this is a video that I've been working on for several months now with my dear friend, Frank Lopez. And some of you may remember Frank if you watched the show. About two months ago, I did a little video documentary piece on him and his work. And I'll link that up in the show notes if you're interested in seeing it, I highly recommend it. Frank is a fantastic photographer. Uh, he's a super cool guy and a very good friend of mine. And in addition to being a fabulous photographer, Frank heads up the photography program at Green Hill School school here in Dallas and what he's doing with his students is nothing short of amazing and several months ago we ran into each other and we were talking about what he was working on and I asked if it would be cool maybe if we did something together to do on the show here because I think this is definitely worth sharing with you guys um, this is at a high school level and Frank started a class uh, about in addition to all the other photography stuff that he teaches there's a very special class that he's working on now that's a collaboration between he and his colleague Chad who teaches chemistry up there that you're gonna see in this video and it's basically this idea-driven uh, experimental semester that these students will work on personal projects um, where they experiment around different processes, different chemicals, understand what each chemical does to the process as a whole, and they produce their work in the end, and it is nothing short of fantastic. Not to mention that the students are extremely talented, and I'm very impressed with Green Hill. They have a tremendously strong support for the fine arts program there, and this is really a dream job for any teachers to get to work with all these kinds of processes at that level with those kinds of students. Uh, the talent is extremely high, as you're gonna see in this video. And so I wanna give a special thanks to Frank and Chad for letting me come out and film the students. Uh, thanks to Green Hill School for allowing me to do this. And a real special thanks to the kids that I got to film and work with and see their work. It was extremely inspiring for me to get to go do this because you know, you're seeing people at a very young age that are doing very mature, advanced work. And it was really inspirational for me, if nothing else, because I come home and I'm ready to start working harder at what I do. It was a really cool experience to do. So anyway, without further ado, uh, here's Frank and Chad and the wonderful students at Green Hill School. So these are Sabatier prints, which means that after the fo first exposure of light, you develop the image about halfway and then take it out and expose it again without the negative, so just under full white light. I used a paintbrush to drip, uh, well, to paint the developer on, but I made sure to constantly be uh, draining it off so it didn't pool. So I got this cool kind of uh, coherent wave effect. Like when you get up close, you can see the texture through them, which I think uh, is pretty cool. I think it shows up better, like with that little piece right there, you can kind of see. So I was kind of experimenting using different developers because one of the developers doesn't have a restrainer, so it's kind of spoiling, so it gives like this reddish orange look, but. So I played around a lot with like different, doing different experiments, covering different parts of the image and toning some parts of it with sepia and bleach and other parts just using developer. So I settled on these three because it's like, I think there were three where um, the figure stands out the most. The reason why I chose this image in particular is because I actually, I really like this mountain range back here because it's very subtle and it almost looks like watercolor painting. Like I painted it on instead of having it printed, but the kind of subtleness of how it fades into the background really, really made it work for me in contrast with the harsh texture and the realism of the mountains on the sides. You know, knowing on those tin types and any of those other daguerreotypes, you know, the actual chemistry that's going on there, it's like, you know, it just started to happen. It's like, well, you know, we should start a class. We should start a class that has that chemistry because there's stuff that kids are learning in our, you know, the normal classroom environment here but then you can meld it into what you're doing in in his class and what he was taking his his students through there and then it just started going so we're like let's propose this class students will be able to meld you know the two disciplines i have been working with non silver for many many years and was really kind of getting into introducing a lot of those things to the students and i kept coming over and asking for certain exotic chemicals and of course you know we've got everything and, and Chad's like look at me like what, what, what are you doing with this stuff and uh, so I uh, just kind of became 
an organic thing that we decided to collaborate and uh, uh, you know pull together a true uh, split class that we could incorporate the strengths of both of our departments and divisions. Well, and it's an you know again that 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 realm is to experiment and and here and then at the end I mean let's face it in the chemistry class we can make put a reaction together and wait, I get a precipitate, a, you know, some solid that falls out of solution. You know, how exciting and, 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 and you know, you put that on, you know, on the, on the mantle, it's not really going to draw you in and have be a dinner conversation piece, you know, so I, I think there's that, that, that creative outlet for a kid that has some artistic sensibility and, and while at the same time with chemistry and say, look what we get at the end of this and again, and it's that experimentation and, you know, students will say, what will happen? That's the point. It's based upon ideas, you know, and all of my classes are based upon ideas, you know. Like, why why are you doing this? You know, what, what's the idea behind the image? At Green Hill School, uh, our fine arts division is uh, very strong, you know, we have great support of the arts. And so a lot of our students will use this as supplemental for their either AP art, honors photography, uh, college portfolio, applying uh, to even studying the sciences, having a portfolio coming out of high school applied, you know, mathematics and scientific and, and art and throwing everything in all together is one of those things that just makes a student even more of an attractive uh, candidate for the school of their choice. And we're one of the really the anom anomalies now since most schools, most college uh, uh, or universities have eliminated the wet dark room and so that's why I've always insisted that we have the wet dark room in addition to teaching digital and this still even uh, adds that digital element to the uh, image making by uh, digital generation of negatives uh, and manipulation of images but really what you're looking at for the final uh, portfolios those manipulations happened in the dark room.